Oh my god, what are Rick and Ryan up to now? It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. Show, what's good, man? What is happening, sir? How are you? Uh, you know, um, welcome to Tuesday, or as I like to call it, the second Monday. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> yeah, I had a really good weekend, but yesterday and today just been like, oh, just kind of dragging by. Yeah, it uh, it takes a lot out of you, don't it? Yes, it does. How was your so, weekend? My weekend was pretty good. I mean, for the uh, weekend, I really didn't do much of anything. I just sort of just like laid around the house and just relaxed. But just like any weekend, it goes by too fast no matter what you do. This is true. I went uh, fishing Friday night and Saturday. And then Sunday, I took a bike ride out to Topeka to visit with my sister. So, yeah, it was beautiful. A lot of fun. Got a lot of sun. I don't know if you can see, but I'm pretty burned up here. Uh, I, I do see this, a little bit of red here. Yeah, okay. I just, all this I just time, thought it was I thought reflection. I was light skin. No, I it was reflection from all that cheese red going on in the background there. Let me see. This might put it into perspective. That indeed it does. <laughs> but but hey, it was a blast. Don't, don't get it twisted. We all burn, brother. We all burn. Oh yeah. Um, I'll 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 be crispy, you know, that get golden brown here in a little bit. You know, I look beautiful. Just gotta burn first. Oh yeah. So um let's get started with some news, bro. All right. Um from This article I read here from the National Post, Ford Motors, um, they had a commercial accused of destroying 120 years of American history within one minute. And the article shows a uh, Ford truck with the rainbow coloring on it. And it says Ford has become the latest target for uh, conservatives after an old commercial showing a rainbow wrapped Raptor went viral. And like many uh, corporations marketing strategies, the automobile manufacturer hoped that the inclusion bandwagon uh, and aired the ad during pride month last June. And the video resurfaced on TikTok and, you know, say what you will about TikTok. That's another story altogether. Uh, with a text overlay claiming the company had destroyed 120 years of American history in one minute. Now, before I go any fur- further with the article, uh, American ask history. You, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I want to ask you, what do you think? I mean, regardless of what we think about sex, male, female, anything in between or outside the lines, I don't think Ford has destroyed anything. You know, this goes right in line with uh, whoever they put on a can of beer. I mean, it's still the same beer on the inside, isn't it? I mean, yes. Theoretically speaking, yes. Um, I don't understand the destroying the 100 years of American history. Ford is supposed to be a tough American brand, I guess, and they've They've destroyed that, which I don't believe that they did. I mean, Ford stands for fix or repair daily anyway. So I don't know, or if you're a race car fan, it stands for fucked on race day. But still, I I don't understand why it's, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with their agenda, but I understand business wise, you got to, you're marketing to that demographic. You know, you're just trying to make money. I don't agree that that it, that it destroyed, uh, that it destroyed um, the history. I, I just think it's 
Well, here's where I am on this, kids. I'm, I am I'm tired of getting the agenda being pushed. I'll tell you that. I, I, that is true. But I am going to say this, and I'm probably going to be uh, probably going to be some emails to us. By the way, if you want to say something, email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. But here goes. Most of the people who are mad about this are the same people that they or their ancestors believe that my people have gotten too close to the wider audience would rub off on them color wise, which I don't know where that came from. Not true. Let it go. Yes, I agree. I just think it's dumb. I I, I really do. Listen, if you got a Ford Raptor, rock that bad boy. I don't care what color it is or how many colors are on it. That's your thing. Your thing is your thing. My thing is my thing. Shows I do is also, his thing. I also do think, um, and I know we'll discuss this, I think, on that one video that I sent you maybe, but biblically speaking, there was the spiritual religious heads get upset because... You know, the rainbow is God's uh, promise that he'll never flood the earth again, according to the mm -hmm. Bible. So for that agenda to be pushed using that, that also takes a lot of um, Christian believers off, I guess. So I'm sure they're all in the same thing, you know, oh, well, same my, realm. I, I guess I'm about to piss some of them off, too, because here's my thing. If you truly follow Jesus... Did Jesus not sit down with the sinners? And are we not supposed to love everybody? Not It doesn't say in the Bible, agree with everybody. It says, love everybody. So now I'm going to take the opposite side of that. And I love you unconditionally, my friend. However, what did God do to Sodom and, or to, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah? What did ah, he do to that? You made your point. What's the first thing you said? What did Sodom God do? No, what exactly. did God do? Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. Correct. Love but, the person, hate the sin. But you don't have to agree with it. No, no, I didn't say agree with it. That's why I These say love people, the person, hate the sin. The people aren't hating the people. They're hating the agenda. And I get that. I get that. They hate the agenda. But what can you do? You can't change it. No, but you better speak up about it if you feel against it. You know, the, the Bible doesn't say be quiet. True. Uh, true. <sighs> the world is just getting crazier and crazier. It is. All right. I want y'all to speak up on this. Leave us some uh, messages on YouTube or on the website. And let us know what you guys think about this whole thing too because we want to hear from you we want to know especially show show can't wait because you know it might help him uh put some uh jokes together for the end of our shows <laughs> show can't read so don't don't worry about giving it send it to me <laughs> <laughs> that's a lie okay so check it out this is older here a man asked dave ramsey uh if a thousand dollars is enough for an emergency fund in 2023 and uh, Dave's response drew a lot of laughter and applause. And basically, he just said, um, in a nutshell, $1,000 is not enough right now. It was barely enough back when he first said that in 2003. So I'm not even going to you know, argue that because Dave Ramsey's absolutely right. $1,000 ain't no money. It ain't going to get you nothing. But I want to ask you. How much do you believe an emergency, a proper emergency fund should be for you and your family? I mean, I think the thousand dollars is just as legit as in 2003 as it is today um, with his. If you actually follow his total money makeover um, deal, because his whole point is you use savings to pay down debt and that thousand dollars is for, you know, you you have to change a tire on a car or you know something like that it's not like if your house catches fire that $1000 is going to replace everything that's not what it's for it's strictly emergency just what it says yeah however 
Um, you know, if you want to be realistic and throw a number out there, it really depends. Like I have emergency credit card that I don't touch, you know, and it's got a certain amount of limit. If I need it, I need it. I pay it off at the end of the month. Um, but I think this, the strategy is just as effective. Um, people get too stickler on this particular amount, but if it didn't work back then, nobody would have ever gotten out debt free and nobody would know who David Ramsey was. I agree. Uh, my only thing is I believe that somewhere between two and $5,000 is a proper emergency fund. And the reason why I say that is because most issues, big issues usually come up with the car. And if it's an engine problem, it's almost always going to be a little bit more than a thousand dollars. And if you've got at least two, I feel like you can be just a little bit more comfortable as far as that's concerned. Yes and no. I mean, but if you're only driving a $1,500 car and the motor blows and it's going to cost $2,000 to fix it, are you going to use your emergency fund to fix it? Probably not. No, I'm going to use $1,500 to get put a down payment on a car and trade that one in and get some something out of it. And uh, But see, that's that's not Dave Ramsey's plan. You don't, have a, you don't have a car note if you're doing Dave Ramsey's plan. That's the point. Then you get another $1,500 car and still have exactly. money in your pocket. Exactly. Can't hear you. What happened? Ladies and gentlemen, we lost Big Show. Oh, no. There we go. Can you hear me now? There we got him. Yeah, we, now we got what? you. I must have hit the mute by accident. So he, Show just said something that he didn't want us to hear, y'all. That's right. I was cussing. <laughs> now, what were you Actually, saying? Actually, I said you were right, and I didn't want nobody to hear that. <laughs> so let's Damn. move on to the next topic. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what do we got for the next topic, Ricky? Oh, I know, Ricky. We got... I'll put this up here. Ten things that disappeared without people noticing. I don't know if you saw this article when I sent it to your show, so I'm just going to name these ten things. I did read it, but yes, I was, okay. very, I was very surprised. All right, the first one that came up was the 3D television. I never got one. I never cared because I didn't want to have to put on a pair of glasses in my own house just to watch 3D TV. Yep. Came Second, and went. It didn't last very long either. No, it did not. Uh, toys and cereal boxes. Yeah, I knew that was coming because that's that's expensive for just a $3 box of cereal. Even And, and the toys got worse and worse too. And kids didn't what care about that. What cereal are you buying that's only $3, my friend? Okay, when's remember, the last time you went grocery shopping? That that's the proper question. Um, we ain't talking about back in 1980 when it was three dollars a box. You it's been a of, long time since I bought a, a box of cereal. You have to fill out a loan application nowadays for the box of cereal. Oh, I thought that was just eggs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the third thing on there was shame in politics. I, I I think that one hit me hard because I was like, you know, that's right because. 10, 15 years ago, if somebody did the littlest thing, you know, they were out of the limelight for weeks at a time and then, you know, struggled to come back. Now you can do just about anything, shake it off and, and start the campaign up all over again. It's crazy. I don't know about, I don't know about shaking it off because there's still shame in politics. The fact is, is that we like to watch it like a car wreck. So True. we want to hear all the, we want all the tea that's been spilt. We want to hear about it. That, yeah, that is true. Um, the, the, this one on here, Reddit live streams. I never was on Reddit, so I didn't know anything about it. Same here. Swarms of monarch butterflies. Same as Reddit. But I have noticed, I mean, you don't see very many butterflies anymore. When, I think when it we were all young, happens. you used to see them a lot. I, I think we noticed it more, but everything has its season. I know this year I'm seeing a lot more moths than anything. Right. And a, a couple Monarchs. Years, Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say a couple years back, it would have been mosquito season and, you know. Yeah, so but monarch cool. butterflies are, are, are unique and they actually migrate through the seasons. 
And actually here in Kansas City at Wanda County Lake, they have a whole weekend where it's the migration of the monarch butterfly and you they come <laughs> in, but they haven't been as many as as there used to be. Ah, I see. I'm gonna have to pay more closer attention to nature. Now, number seven on this list was the nine to five job. Um, it says here somewhere along the way it turned into eight to five and so forth. That's kind of true. One thing that we are bad about as Americans, we work too many hours a day and too many days a week. And I, I'm going to ask you, do you believe the work no. week should be shorter or the uh, work day should be shorter? I don't believe that you should have to exchange your time for money. No, I'm 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 saying you should still get the same amount of pay, but no, no. work a little I don't I don't believe period that we should have to exchange our time for money. That is a that is a mindset that's been ingrained in us since we were kids. There are other ways to generate revenue. Someday I will share with you on one of these shows how we can do that. That sounds interesting. I'd like you to do legally, that. legally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We got. We got to put that out there. We got to put that out there. Hey, but here's I don't, one. I no, don't believe. Ahead. I don't believe that. Uh, I, I believe the work day and the work week should be shorter. We yes. shouldn't have to be working ten to twelve hours a day just to survive. If my boss is hearing this, listen to the man. Show is right. Just put that out there. Uh, number eight on this list, Ronald McDonald. When we were younger, we used to see Ronald everywhere with his clown ass. This now, true. not so much. McDonald's has become less of an institution and more of a brand. And what I mean by that is it, it's all about the newfangled marketing. You know, that ba da 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 or whatever. Um uh, it's not just the fun place for kids because, you know, kids, first thing they notice is the golden arches. They know they can spot a McDonald's a mile away. That has. Do, you, do I what? Do you think that it's it's our generation of the fear of clowns that drove that out of the mainstream? I, I don't think so. Um because if you think about it, all of the um, what like mascots of fast food joints, you don't see them. You don't see the Burger King very often anymore. Yeah. You don't see the Wendy's girl. Um, I mean, if you have a Jack in the Crack around, you sometimes you see Jack on a commercial, but mostly it's it's like you said, the ba da pa pa pa. I'm loving it. You know, whatever mm -hmm. their little jingle is. Yeah, whatever it is uh, that month, because it changes often, too. Um, And it goes hand, hand in hand with number nine, common pop culture. Because uh, remember back in the 80s and, uh, to some extent, the early 90s, most everybody watched the same TV shows, saw the same movies, listened to the same music. Now we are so overloaded with channels for streaming and this, that, and the other that... Uh, it just isn't the same anymore. It's not. It's definitely not. And, you know, for the people that weren't around for the 80s and 90s music and uh, movies and pop oh, culture. Oh, you don't know what you're missing. Exactly. <clears throat> hey, do you remember? I was remember... talking to my... Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was saying uh, over the weekend, I was talking to my sister. I said, you know, we're the last generation that knew what life was like before the internet. You know, we grew, we've seen it grow to where it is now. You know, we're, we're that, we're a dying breed, my friend. Once we're gone, it's going to be a whole new mindset in this country. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Hey, do you remember foil wrappers on chocolate bars? Oh, I do. Especially them Hershey's. Hmm. Yeah. Nestle that's, Crunch. That's the one I remember. Gone. That one doesn't hurt so much because they still wrapped in something, but it just seems like everything's gotten cheaper, including the candy bar. To me, some of the stuff's gotten smaller, too, because I know I ain't grown that much. 
I'm paying. <laughs> I'm paying more for it, and I'm getting less. Welcome I could to be the wrong. new world that we live in. Uh, that is that is true. So, hey, uh, before we get out of here, we've got some breaking news, and uh, we've got our correspondent here, and uh, apparently. He's interviewing Satan. And we're going to just, you know, listen in and talk about it while we listen in and go from there. So here we go. Whoa. Lucifer in the flesh. Do you know how many journalists would kill? Wait, you probably do. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to agreeing to this interview because I know you are very very busy person. Yes. I usually like to fly under the radar. But I figured, since I'm already on the campaign trail, why not? Okay. First, let's talk about your reign. Now, you've had a fairly long one. What would you attribute to your success and popularity? Oh, that's easy. Every generation is the same. I appeal to their lust and ego. I offer all the sex, wealth, and fame a person could want. Do as thou wilt has been my campaign slogan from the start. And my campaign mm -hmm. platform hasn't changed either. I run on the same three issues every generation. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Okay, okay. When you say lust of the flesh, what exactly do you mean? Come on now. What do I mean? Isn't it obvious? I just use humans' own innate physical desires against them. And since sexual desire seems to be the most powerful, I usually run with that. Now, I didn't create sex, but I must say I've done a superb job at perverting it. Take pornography, for example. Well, you should know a lot about this one, Ivan. Weren't you addicted to porn? <clears throat> um, this interview is about you, uh, not about me. Can we get back on subject? <clears throat> <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yeah. What I do is gradually get someone addicted to porn. And once Lust has had his full work and he and she can no longer restrain themselves, they usually look to act out their fantasies on someone. And sometimes that someone is a child. Now, my plan plays out perfectly. That abused child will eventually turn to a life of promiscuity and perversion themselves, allowing me to continue my vicious cycle. And here's the kicker. Many of those abused girls end up right in the porn industry. Now, how's that for irony? I want to tell you a story. Really? We get a commercial on I YouTube. used to believe that Jesus was... Mm. The second thing you had mentioned, I believe, you said lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Can you elaborate? Humans are never satisfied. You always crave more. Bigger house, bigger car, more money, more power. The list goes on and on. I just take their natural ambitious desire, pervert it, and use it against them for their own destruction. My plan is to allow them to never be content. As long as I can keep them craving what others have, I can depend on them to argue, fight, even kill to get it. Humans are so easily tricked into jealousy. And you know what they say. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Yes, I have heard that before. The last thing you had mentioned was, I believe, pride of life. Now, how does this fit into your campaign platform? Humans are always on a quest for knowledge. I tricked the first humans to seek carnal knowledge over godly wisdom, and it's worked like a charm every generation since. With more knowledge comes more pride, and you know pride is my specialty. And since humans don't like to keep God in their wisdom, I'm able to seduce them with all types of things to help puff up their ego. Lately, fame has been my biggest seller. Who doesn't like attention and feeling more important than the next person? Once I make them famous, I can really use them to promote my agenda. With their help, 
I've convinced half of the world to not only accept sin, but to celebrate it. Do you know what has been my most enjoyable pride campaign to date? No, what? Well, my gay pride campaign, of course. Not only do I get the chance to promote your own self-destruction, I get to use God's logo, the rainbow, to do it. Love is love, right? There it is, show. <laughs> my plan not only prevents you worthless humans from reproducing, it distorts the gender roles and allow me to bring all types of chaos and confusion upon your pathetic societies. It's been so successful, I've got men convinced they're women. And women convinced they're men. And some convinced they're no gender at all. And I've got two more pride initiative campaigns I'd like to introduce in the near future. Mm. Really? I'm guessing you probably want me to ask you what they are, right? Well, first, it's abortion pride. Now, I think we can pull this off. Society is definitely ready for it. I've enlisted to help a Planned Parenthood to work with marketing and promotions. And all we'll have to do is silence the so-called abolitionists and pro-lifers, because the rest of the church doesn't seem to care. And second is pedophilia pride. Now, society might not be ready for this one just yet, so we'll hold off. I need to desensitize them a little more before we introduce it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's change gears for a minute and talk about policy. Some may consider your policies destructive, dangerous even. Uh, what would be your response to that? What would you say to your detractors? All of my policies are aimed to do one of three things. Either steal, kill, or destroy. And if it's not doing one or all three of those things, then it's not in my agenda and I'm not promoting it. Okay, okay. I'm happy you said that. It seems as if you promote your agenda differently to different, to different ethnicities. Uh, if so, why? Of course. I'd be a fool not to. Take black people, for instance. As a people, they're super spiritual. So I can't really convince them that there is no God. What I have been able to do as of late is convince them that he's not the God of the Bible. Now, I've been real successful at promoting black consciousness and Islam in their communities. I'm so happy you mentioned black people. It seems as if we've been at the very top of your agenda for quite some time. Why is that? A few reasons. Black people helped me reach the masses. Now, as you know, I was over music in heaven. My beats were so dope, I got over a third of the angels to follow me. And once I got here to the earth, I needed artists and entertainers to help me promote my message here. Who better than black people? Black people possess all the natural rhythm and music ability that I need. And it's easy for me to influence them with money since so many of them grew up without it. Mm. Another reason I target black people is because they're strong mentally and physically. If black men were to ever find their identity in Christ, <laughs> I'd be in trouble. So I try my best to destroy the black family structure and keep black men away from his family and the church. Drugs and incarceration are a couple of my more popular means. Without the head of the household present, I can become the head and influence the children without too much resistance. So you mean to tell me that your policies are intentionally racist against black people? Racist? <laughs> this has got to be the best law I've ever come up with. Now, I can't believe that humans still believe they're different races. But to answer your question, yes. It has always been my policy to target and isolate a group of people. And out of all my strategies, <laughs> this skin color thing has worked the best. I definitely want to keep white people and black people separated. As long as I can keep black people bitter and white people offended, I'm good. Hopefully black people will never forgive. That way I can continue to use them. Okay, what, my question is, what role, if any, does your administration play in this black on black crime epidemic? <laughs> well, as great as my administration is, we can't take all the credit for this. Black people help us tremendously. By aborting so many of their babies, they allow us to bring death to their communities. As the Bible says, they sow the wind and reap a whirlwind. Mm. 
when implementing all of these policies, do you ever face any resistance or pushback? And if so, from who? One group in particular try to oppose every policy I try to implement. I would be so much further along with my agenda if it wasn't for them. Really? So what group is that? Those pesky, born again, Jesus followers. They're a real thorn in my side. Every generation, they come together and try to dismantle one of my signature policies. Now, I've convinced half of the world that Jesus didn't exist and the other half that he wasn't divine. But I can't seem to convince them. They seem hell-bent on telling everybody about him and spreading his message. And some of me believe he's coming to unseat me in this generation. <laughs> Crazy, huh? I'll tell you, those idiots are really messing with my legacy. So, Lucifer, how does that make you feel when uh, us idiots say that Jesus possibly could be coming back in this generation to unseat you? Huh. Y'all been saying that for centuries. I just use it as motivation to get as much of my agenda pushed through and deceive as many people as possible before he returns. I think I've done pretty well. My record speaks for itself. About 150,000 people die each day, and most of them don't know Jesus. 150,000 people. Whew. Well, you know what? This concludes our interview. Uh, I want to say thank you for open, honest, pretty frank discussion with me. Uh, is there any last words you would like to leave with our viewing audience? Yes. I'd like to take this moment and give a special thank you to two groups of people. First, I want to say thank you to all my followers. You are the hands and feet of my administration and we could do nothing without you. Keep up the good work, spread my message. And second, I'd like to say thank you to the divided church. I love the way you argue and use your passions to fight amongst each other. Keep up the good work. There's really no rush to tell people about Jesus. You all have plenty of time. <laughs> now that was off of a uh, podcast, Ivan the Evangelist. That was his page, I believe. So, uh, yeah. Did you happen to read the stuff going underneath the bottom? I did not, uh, but you know me, I'm going to watch it, you know, a couple times. So I will be reading it. Um, so and I know when you, you do that, mm -hmm. yeah, when you do that, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's basically about what the Bible says is going to happen in the end times, you know, when particular people start to join the other particular people or fight other people, you know, it, it, that was pretty interesting. Yes, it certainly was. And, and it, you know, it, it puts it out there, you know, it, it, it puts it out there and, I, I like the way they did it. I like the way they set it up because it's one thing for him to just look at the camera and say it, but using it in a interview kind of scenario, that brings it a lot closer to home. Yeah, it, it was definitely a good way to get the message across. Yes, it was. Um, and it, I mean, and what he's saying is not wrong. I mean, that's what's going on in this world today. That's exactly you know, right. Whether you, whether you are a true believer, I mean, whether you actually believe in God and the devil, I mean, there's there's always a yin and a yang to everything. Um, but, yeah, that was very interesting. Yeah, and, you know, I'm not trying to push anybody in any particular direction, but I will say this. To people that don't believe in God, think about it this way. You had to get created somehow. Nothing just happens. Look, I'm going to go above you. I am a true believer. So, yes, I am trying to force my opinion on you. And I want you to know Jesus because I want you to have everlasting life. That is my job. Well, and I don't, have this get, don't get me do wrong. That. Don't get me wrong. I want people to know Jesus. Don't give me. I'll start. I'll start preaching. Don't get me going. Right. <laughs> nothing wrong with that I, I i just i just like to start at that base level so that 
we can just wipe away this illusion that God doesn't exist. Yes. And if you ever, you know, please, those out there that are watching, you know, if you have any questions or concerns or, you know, please throw those on, email us to us. We can respond. And, you know, if you're having questions about different scriptures to read, we can give those to you as well. And if I don't know them, I definitely know people that do and can find those answers for you. Yeah, that's that's the thing. That's the big thing I want to say before we get out of here. We don't have all the answers, but we can find somebody that does. We're just the talking heads. Yes, We're sir. the two faces that you see every week on this channel. But believe me, there's there's more that goes on behind the scenes. Yes, sir. Joe, you got a joke for the day to get us out of here? I do have a corny big show joke of the day. <clears throat> Drum roll, please. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Why don't pirates take showers before they walk the plank? Oh, I feel like I've heard this one before, but I don't remember it. I, I don't remember it. I don't know. They just wash up on shore. I have heard that. <laughs> set, you set me up. Set me up. I have heard that. Okay. Yar. If I need a good dad joke to tell their kids, there you go. There you go. <laughs> bonus, bonus dad joke. My son called me earlier because we trade we trade dad jokes, and he said, "What did the DJ name his son?" Never heard that one before. What did he name him? Eric. <laughs> Definitely a dad joke. Definitely. On that note, everybody, stay positive, stay blessed. Show, take us out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will see you next week. Good Lord willing. Be sure to love each other. Tell the people in your life you love them. Tomorrow is not promised. Deuces. Later.